up there. Hell yeah! Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here on behalf of Lucky Tackle Box, and today I'm gonna to introduce you to the Jenko Fishing Big Wig. Now, this is a hair jig. Um, originally, hair jigs were made popular surf fishing for like striped bass and uh, you know whatever else you can find there bluefish you know out on the east coast but in the last few years and actually quite like some time back I think it was about 10 15 years ago there was a big wave in the bass fishing community of guys fishing hair jigs then it kind of lost its charisma and then it's recently came back over the last couple of years on the elite level tours FLW and bass uh, bass elite series now the interesting part about the big wig here is it has feathers and it has marabou with flashaboo in there and a chartreuse head I believe this is the three quarter ounce yeah yeah it is so how i'm gonna fish this guy is basically deeper rock piles humps ledges somewhere there is bigger bait bigger shad you know if you have gizzard shad or even bigger thread fin shad that is going to work now one thing that people get a lot of uh, there's a lot of confusion around it the color white they always think the color white the bass see white they really don't. White reflects ultraviolet. So they're gonna see some natural looking colors and a lot of reflection coming off of that white and reflection of here. So it just looks like a reflective bait fish to them. Now, let's get into the setup. This is a, looks to me like a 5.0 extra heavy, probably I would say 4X or 6X diameter hook. And that's the thickness of the hook. Oh, you cannot bend that sucker. That is stout. So the minimal line I'm gonna throw this on is 20 pound fluorocarbon. I'm throwing it out there. I'm hopping it up off the bottom. Hop, hop, letting it fall. Hop, hop, letting it fall. And if a big one yanks on that, I'm gonna know immediately with that fluorocarbon, if I don't feel the weight of that three quarter ounce jig right there, if it gets light, I'm gonna reel down fast and get ready to set that hook because one caught it and a lot of the time, when you're lifting, you feel the weight, you're lifting, you feel the weight, and one grabs it, all of a sudden it just feels like there's nothing there. So reel as fast as you can, feel that pressure, and lean and set the hook on them. Now with that 20 pound fluorocarbon, I like a seven to a seven foot six. I'm, I usually make a really long cast with like a hair jig style bait and hop it up. So the longer rod's gonna help, but a seven to a seven foot six, heavy power, fast action. Bending right up in the tip. A fast action is ton of backbone, big stout hook you need to be able to set it and set it hard now drag is pretty important when setting on big baits but basically any bait casting reel nowadays is going to have 12 plus pounds of drag or more so what i actually like is i like a semi high speed something at least seven to one and faster i don't like the slow speeds if i make a long cast and i miss sometimes there will be a school of bass down there and you miss and one will grab it and if you have slack in your line you may not be able to reel up to get to that tight line to set the hook fast so that seven speed reel is also what i like there all right guys when it comes to casting in the big wig out there you just want to bomb a cast out there and you want to make sure it's down to the bottom if you're fishing shallow landing and engaging your clutch like so is fine in shallow water that turn just dove on bait in front of us that was awesome he's actually diving on shad although our shad out here in the california delta in this area are about this big so the big wigs double so i could just be looking for a huge bite if i'm not really matching the hatch so to speak so i make that long cast out there it's shallow my bait falls down to the bottom if i was fishing in 15 or 20 feet of depth, I wouldn't want to engage my clutch right away because what's going to happen is I'm going to get a tight line and that bait's going to land and it's going to pendulum back. I don't want that. I want that full distance. I want it to free fall. So sometimes watching your line as it's dropping in the water, sometimes feeding out additional line until it gets down to the bottom is key. All I'm going to do, let me make contact with the bait here. All I'm going to do is hop, hop, as fast twitches with my rod tip like that. And I hold here because if you do it with one arm, all day it's gonna make you very exhausted so I reel up a couple times to a tight line I do both hands and I snap snap what it looks like is a darting bait fish or a die-off later in the fall when those big shads start to die off they kind of just flutter lift up and flutter down so that tight line snap snap double pop one two three reel down let it fall to the bottom one reel down let it fall to the bottom one two 
and just change up that cadence the whole time. When they hammer this thing, they're gonna hammer it hard. So what you need to pay very close attention to when you put that cast out there, okay? When you're double snapping it, don't get too high. You get too high with your rod tip and then they grab it. You don't have any leverage to set the hook. So as high as you wanna snap it is about to 10 o'clock and be ready. If you feel anything, you need to reel as fast as you can to nine o'clock and then set that hook real hard to drive that big heavy duty hook in. If you get bit at the top of your jig and you don't reel down to set the hook, you have no leverage. You're gonna feel that fish shake. You're gonna think you have him and he's gonna be gone. So when, when I fish the big wig, basically when I know they're keying in on bigger bait fish, I don't care if they're up shallow. I don't care if they're out deeper. I mean, in the spring, the bass are clearly gonna be shallow. They're not always necessarily feeding up on shad. In the middle of the summer, when those fish pull out deeper on those main lake points, humps, and ledges, it's a perfect time to throw that and bounce it off the bottom. In the fall, they start chasing the bait fish back into the creeks. You can fish this shallow, hop it off rocky bluffs, let it free fall down a wall on a semi-tight line to feel if they grab it. Um, later in the fall, when the shad really start to die off, this sucker can be absolutely crucial to catching big fish around that time. I'm Nick the Informative Fisherman and that's the Jenko Fishing Big Wig. Remember guys, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the Lucky Tackle Box YouTube channel. We greatly appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time. Best of fishing.